Hey guys, it's Josh. I'm just finishing up a mix job that I had here and I thought it'd be a good time to show you guys what I do once a project is completed and you need to archive and back up that project. So first thing I do is open up the most recent mix, which on this particular song was mix version three. And I'll start by going to file and save as. I'll go ahead and name this one final mix. And the reason being is that if we happen to make any mistakes during our cleanup here and backup, you would always have the final mix that you did to pull from to bring any tracks or information back in. So as you can see, there's a few things here that got um, disabled for whatever reason, didn't get used, or maybe it was, you know, bounced to a different track, that sort of thing. So go ahead and get rid of those. And then what I like to do next is go through any plugins that got disabled. So, you know, just ideas that I tried along the way, but they weren't quite, quite the right fit. So go ahead and clean this up. And the reason I go through this is that I've had to open sessions in Pro Tools sometimes years later. And there may be plugins that aren't supported anymore or you don't own anymore. You need to get a demo license to, you know, bounce the mix back down, that kind of thing. And you just don't want anything in here that you did not use to appear as maybe something that's deactivated because you don't have the plugin. So it just helps to cut down any on any confusion, you know, in the future if you need to pull it back up again. As you can tell, I tried a bunch of different reverbs before settling in on, on the lead vocal there. Okay, so after all the the deactivated plugins and sins, looks like I missed one there, are um, gotten rid of, head over to the edit window. And the first thing you want to check is just on any track here, click the little drop down menu. And I don't have any playlist here, but if it's a, especially if it's a project that you tracked yourself, you may have multiple takes. And so you just want to go ahead and click delete unused. And when you do, it's going to bring up a menu showing you all of those tracks that would be deleted so you could kind of you know do one final check and see if it's anything you need or not and then the final thing to do here is to go to select unused from the clips uh, menu and then after you see that it's selected those you're going to click that same little drop down and click clear and it's very important here to click remove instead of delete because at this point we're just trying to get the file size of this session down before we archive it just so that we're not taking up any extra stores and what's needed. So we're just going to remove them from the session, but we're not deleting the original uh, file locations quite yet. As you can see, it trimmed that list down, you know, a good bit there. So the last thing you want to do here is go to file, save copy in, and the most important thing is to click items to copy audio files because that way you're making a whole new session with complete audio files for your backup in your archive. And the reason this is important, like this particular job was sent to me through Dropbox. And so if my sessions were still linking to those Dropbox files and, you know, years down the road, the artist removed those files from Dropbox, when I would pull this up to do a remix or, you know, for whatever reason need to revisit it those files would all be missing and I would have no audio and as you guys know that have been through that it's a, the worst feeling in the world so you definitely want to avoid that so we're saving a copy you can I, I'm keeping the sample rate and the bit depth exactly the same as what I had it and like I said just make absolutely sure that you've got audio files checked here so once you click OK I like to name this archive and I've already got the folder set up here for this particular project once you click save you're gonna see it process the files here usually doesn't take too long okay so now that that's done what I like to do is go ahead and just close out the session and then I like to go over to the place that I saved the copy to 
and I like to go ahead and open this and the reason being is we just want to make absolute sure that um, the the new track with the full audio files that everything copy like it should have because sometimes you know you're going through this and to be honest this is not the most fun part of a project and it'd be easy to kind of forget a step or maybe you didn't check the copy all audio files box so I always like to double check and so we didn't get any warnings that any files were missing you know if we scroll through here everything looks great everything's there and I do want to show you guys if I go to the version that I just saved I'm gonna click right click so we're gonna right click and choose get info and as you can see the final archived version ended up being 3.29 gigs so let's go back to the original so look we were able to cut down from 5.32 to 3.29 so that's the reason for doing this uh, you know cut down on the space for long-term storage also to set it up in the future where you can reopen that have a nice clean session not have any confusion about what files you may have used or what plugins and uh, just to make sure you you know you finish up strong because you never know when you might need to revisit one of these things um, a lot of times with Steven and I will have an opportunity for a TV film or advertising placement and they may need a little bit different of a mix you know vocal in or out on this certain part so it's just great to have this stuff stored in a way that makes it easy for you to use in the future. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you will, go ahead and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube to make sure you stay updated with all of our latest videos. We love getting to know you guys, so thanks so much for your support, and have a great day.